Executive Vice President of the OWTU joins us now on the Zoom line, Risa Ramlogan Jodha. Good to have you again. Uh, this is about the second time we're having our interaction, and you promised to come back after the blackout investigation findings. Uh, before we get to that, let me say good morning to you. Hi, good morning to you as well. Good morning to Trinidad and Tobago. It's nice being here once more. So I read that you all were not satisfied with the blackout investigation, the findings. Uh, how so? Give us some details as to why. All right. So based on what would have been pre presented, the union is now questioning what was the purpose of that investigation. And that is so because, as the line minister would have revealed, um, it was a fungus-infected tree that would have caused that blackout, that 10-hour blackout back in February. But it is quite obvious that that is not the root cause of the problem. And it seems as though that investigative report did not treat with the root cause of the problem. And um, it leaves one to wonder why that is the case. Because the root cause of the problem ties back in to one of the issues that the union will have been identifying for quite some time now, which is the contracting out of jobs at TNTEC. And that report was supposed to have revealed the fact that a contractor would have been responsible for the maintenance of that particular line where the tree fell. And it is quite evident that for some reason, that information did not surface in that report. Okay, because I remember the last time we had our conversation, you were making mention that there are contractors who, again, doing the work, of course, under the umbrella of TNTEC, uh, some of them even, you said, in yellow vans, uh, obviously not branded TNTEC per se, but they're moving around. And I guess the, the big question is their competence. Um, from your standpoint, are these contractors up to speed? Are they up, up to... Do they make the grade? And the answer, the simple answer to that is no. And I'll tell you why. Even when TNTEC had to engage in training for our internal, um, the, the persons responsible for clearing of lines and maintenance of vegetation on the outside, our workers, they would have identified a Canadian-based company to conduct this training because they realized that the expertise did not reside here in local TNT. And what we're seeing is that <clears throat> after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in training to ensure that our guys are equipped with what is necessary to conduct the work on the outside there, here you have contractors that are coming on the system and they have very little, in some instances, to no training, and they are being placed on the system to do the work that is expected of them. And quite frankly, they would do the work but when they don't know what is, how it is supposed to be done, that is where the problem comes in. It is not done up to standard. And this is why in, in a lot of cases, on the, I'll use the Maracas feed as an, as an example, because the residents in that area, um, they could bear witness to the fact that there are frequent outages in that area. And our crews, our internal crews, would have to be the ones to go in and rectify the problems most of the times. and. This is causing a serious problem. It raises a lot, a lot of questions as to why is this practice continuing, despite the fact that these contractors have proven not to be efficient, based on the fact that they are not properly trained. It begs the question, what's the working relationship between the TNT employees and the said contractors? I wonder if uh, there is rumbling, if there is a sense of, as we say in local terms, bad blood. Uh, what's, what's your understanding on the ground of the working relationship between the contractors and the, I would imagine, permanent or part-time TNTEC employees, those men in the TNTEC truck? All right. So I don't think it's really a situation of bad blood. Um, at the end of the day, the management of TNTEC has to be held accountable. They are the ones responsible for bringing these contractors onto the system. Um, quite frankly, our, our, our members, they understand the responsibility that they have, and they work alongside the contractors in some instances because they obviously have no other choice. We have to do what we have to do because at all times we need to ensure that we don't compromise the service that is being given to the members of the public. Mm -hmm. So we do what we have to do, but what, what, we, what we do as well is that we keep pointing out the fact 
that the commission is failing. The commission is failing in its commitment to ensure that the reliable supply of electricity to the members of the public is not compromised. And I'm saying so because you continue to have these people on the system despite the fact that they are not quite capable. And also, I must say that there is a clause in our collective agreement which caters for the contracting out of work. And that clause continues to be abused because it is supposed to be a situation where there, there's excess work. But the commission is creating a scenario where there is excess work. And this is because they are not filling vacancies. Our field staff, we are critically short in the field. The commission is not training persons to come into the departments in the field to be able to continue with the work. Instead, what they are doing is that they are giving the jobs to contractors. Okay. I've recognized that the OWTU, uh, well, the, the, the union put forward the claim of alleged corruption at the commission. Uh, do, you want to do you want to elaborate? I mean, how did you all come to this uh, particular conclusion? Well, it's really about following the, the, the money trailer. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that. How can the commission, how can the commission continue to keep contractors on the system? This is despite the fact that we have been having so many problems with contractors. And I'm also saying there was one particular situation in the region South, in San Fernando, where a contractor was brought in because of shoddy work that was done. The contractor was called in so that a determination can be made as to, okay, how do we treat with this contractor? And that contractor was accompanied by someone who is affiliated to a political party. And the end result was that nothing came out of the meeting. The contractor continued working on the system and the, the, the shoddy work continues. And it leaves one to wonder why, ask the question why. Is this only at the level of the management of Kentech or is this being facilitated by higher offices in this country? Hmm, interesting development there. And that is on file? That is on record? That, that particular, what you just Most established definitely. coming out in the Southland? That is correct. Hmm. Uh, who, who can one go to uh, when, when you make that kind of a uh, discovery? Who's the person? Who's the higher up you can report to? And the, the, the higher up that the union would have gone to would have been the line minister. And this is the reason why the union was outside of the, the union, along with the workers at TNTEC, some of the workers at TNTEC. Um, we were outside of the line minister's office yesterday. Yeah. Because since 2020, um, the latter part of 2020, we would have been reaching out to the line minister to have discussions with him concerning some of the issues we would have identified at TNTEC. The use of contractors obviously being one. And to date, unfortunately, for whatever reason, that meeting just can't take place. And it cannot be that the union has been bringing these critical issues to you because we didn't just write for a meeting now. The union would have provided an agenda of the items to be discussed at that meeting. So the line minister is fully aware, and I'm saying that he's fully aware because he did acknowledge on national television the, the receipt of the letter that was delivered on in April of 2022. Yet still, there was no official acknowledgement to the union. Neither, neither has there been a response to the union with regards to those letters which would have been delivered. And we would have brought the, these issues to the, the, the office that is responsible for the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission being a public utility. And that is the Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, which is the Minister of Public Utilities. If you have an audience with the minister this morning, because he seems, I mean, I had a conversation with him some weeks ago here on the program. He seems to, at least from what he would have expressed, uh, have his mind and his heart, I would imagine, in the, in the right place. But if indeed you're suggesting here to us this morning that correspondence was sent, there's been no response, I would love to find out if you had a chance to meet with him this morning, or at least sometime soon, what would be your immediate request and what you'll want to be done as the top priority at this point in time concerning the commission. All right. So if that opportunity would have would, would present itself, one of the first things that we will treat with as a union would be the use of contractors at TNTEC because that that is a, a serious issue 
which it, it carries the potential to hamper the service that is being provided to the members of the public. Along with that, we have the situation of our temporary workers. You have temporary workers who report to TNTEC on a daily basis. This has been the case for five, six, in some instances, even seven years. And the commission has failed to confirm these workers. The commission's claim is that there is not a need for them in the organization. But how can there not be a need for these persons when they continue to do the same thing on a daily basis for five, six, up to seven years? In addition to that, we have a serious situation where vacancies are not being filled. There has been no hiring at TNTEC for quite some time. In addition to that, we have the serious issue of the manpower audit. The Commission claims to have completed a manpower audit since 2017. We are now in 2022. And the reality is, the information arising out of that manpower audit has not been shared with the Union. And what makes it even worse is that the Commission continues to speak of structures within, structures within the various areas and departments of the organization. And when the union asks, okay, let us see what these structures are so that we can have we can sit and have discussions about the way forward. The commission's response is we are not obligated to give that to you. This is a recognized majority union. We are a major stakeholder in the organization. We have played a critical role in the development de development as well as the service that the commission has been providing to the members of the public. Yeah. And we will continue to be a major stakeholder. And obviously, it speaks to the fact that, that that relationship has deteriorated to the place where the Commission feels as though they don't have to sit and, and have discussions with the union. And this is leading TNTEC on a, a downward slope that can quickly result in, in some serious problems. So we were really calling on the Office of the Line Minister to sit with the union and have productive and meaningful discussions yeah. geared towards the preservation of the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission. Executive Vice President, I want to thank you this morning for coming forward, as always, uh, keeping us up to speed with the developments. And uh, if indeed you have that audience with the minister, please let us know how things go. We'll touch base soon. Most definitely, yes. All right, that's Risa. Ram Logan Jodha, the, the executive vice president of the OWTU. We come back with the president and the CEO of the TTCSI. Their big uh, luncheon is coming up, their AGM luncheon, and the theme is mapping the way forward.